Hello. On behalf of the New York City Regional Emergency Medical Advisory Committee, I would like to thank you for participating in this training. For the past two years, the Regional Emergency Medical Advisory Committee, along with the New York City Fire Department and other agencies, have been working to prepare a new Stroke Systems of Care plan for New York City. In this plan, the goal is to deliver the right patient to the right hospital in the right time. The span of this project includes all sectors of the New York City pre-hospital system, including municipal, commercial, volunteers, and hospital-based. This system will provide seamless continuity of care for all stroke patients from the pre-hospital setting through inter-facility transfers. This project represents a true collaborative effort in this region, and I would like to personally thank each of you for the work that you do to ensure the best pre-hospital care in New York City. As we seek to always provide the highest level of pre-hospital care to all who call 911 for a medical emergency, we rely on evidence-based medicine to improve the quality of the care that we provide. Recently, studies have shown that there is a potential benefit to patients suffering from a large vessel occlusion stroke to be taken to an advanced level stroke center that can perform thrombectomy on these select patients. To this end, we have collaborated with the New York City Regional Emergency Medical Advisory Committee to develop a destination protocol, provide training to all participants in the New York City 911 system, and implement policy and procedures so that such identified patients can be transported to one of these advanced level stroke centers. During your training session, you will hear more about large vessel occlusion strokes, or LVOs, and how to identify, treat, and transport such patients in our system. Thank you for all of your tremendous work in the field. We could not be successful without you and your dedication. Please stay safe. Thank you. Hello, my name is David Benelli. I am one of the division medical directors for the New York City Fire Department, and I'm also the chairman of the Medical Standards Committee of the New York City Remac Remsco. And my name is Michael Redliner. Uh, I am a medical director for EMS at Mount Sinai St. Luke's and Mount Sinai West, uh, and I'm also the chair of the Quality Improvement Committee for the New York City Remac and Remsco. Uh, today, we're going to be discussing some important changes in the the and work that we've done over the past two and a half years to improve stroke care for patients in New York City. So all across the country, regions are dealing with really updating their stroke protocols based on new evidence that we'll discuss in just a little while. But what we want to discuss today is really how we as New York City came to our new protocols and work with our partners across the region. The REMAC, the American Heart Association, the New York State Department of Health, and the Fire Department work together as partners to come up with our new protocols in conjunction with our hospital partners and the Greater New York Hospital Association as well. Our scale is called the New York City SLAM scale, or the New York City Speech plus the LA Motor Scale. We're going to go into details about what that means and what that entails as we go through the presentation today. What we'd like to do is review the pathophysiology of stroke and really talk about the new evidence and what it means for pre-hospital care in New York City. So a stroke occurs when the blood supply to part of the brain is interrupted or severely disrupted or reduced. And that deprives the brain tissue of uh, essential oxygen and nutrients. Why is stroke important? Each year, almost 800,000 people experience a stroke. Approximately 610,000 of those are new strokes and the rest are recurrent strokes. Stroke is the number one cause of disability in the United States and the number four cause of death uh, right behind heart disease, cancer, and chronic lower respiratory diseases. In New York City, there's an average of 50 CVAC and CVA stroke calls per day, which adds up to more than 18,000 calls per year. That's a huge burden on the uh, healthcare system. It equates to 1.25% uh, of the total EMS calls per day. The next item we'll talk about is the classification of stroke. 
really there are three types of stroke that we can discuss, but um, I'll just briefly cover uh, the bleeding strokes, which are a hemorrhagic stroke, which takes place within the, the brain tissue, and a subarachnoid hemorrhage, which is outside of the brain tissue itself, but it's bleeding in the brain. Those only could uh, make up about 13% of all strokes. What we're really going to focus on today is the ischemic stroke. And now the ischemic stroke is the blockage of the vessel, as Dr. Benelli has explained in a prior slide. And what you see here, this is a representation of the middle cerebral artery. Uh, and if you drill down on what's happening here, you see that there's maybe some plaque and a blood clot that, that restricts blood flow to the, to the brain that's beyond uh, that area in the blood vessel. So uh, that blockage is really what we're going to be thinking about in terms of mechanism and how, this, how a stroke can happen. Um, so there are types within the ischemic stroke that uh, we have to think about. That blockage can happen at, at a small blood vessel or it can happen uh, at a large vessel. And so we, when we think about these major strokes or these large vessel occlusions, uh, we're thinking about large areas of brain that are affected by uh, the, the blockage in that artery. Um, and when we think about how we evaluate and think through what's happen happening to somebody, the things that we usually see are unilateral paralysis, difficulty speaking, and these are things that if you de deprive the brain of blood flow on uh, one side or the other, you're really going to see this, this area uh, uh, affected, and if you look at this, this is called a homunculus. Uh, it's just a representation of how much brain tissue controls what area of your body. And so when you, when you uh, restrict blood flow to this area, these are the areas that are affected, the hands and the face primarily. Uh, one other way to think about this is for these large vessel occlusions that you're losing neurons, you're losing brain tissue as the time goes on. And so uh, I, we're in the business of treating patients rapidly, and this is no different. So we really, you know, we can think about it as, in this way. You're losing 120 million neurons per hour. You, you're aging the brain 3.6 years on average when uh, someone has a large vessel occlusion. So really, I think we want to reinforce that time equals brain, and we need to treat patients rapidly. Okay, so how did we care for stroke? Until 1996, there was no acute intervention for stroke. So if a patient would come up to the ED uh, with a stroke, we'd say, oh, we're really sorry. Uh, we're going to put you in uh, rehabilitation. We're going to do uh, occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech therapy, and uh, hopefully you'll re regain some of the uh, losses you sustained as a result of the stroke. Then in 1996, a new agent called TPA, which is a blood clot busting agent, was approved for use, and that changed the way we care for stroke. And that led to the designation of primary stroke centers. We have almost 50 primary stroke centers in New York City, um, and their goal is to administer that uh, blood clot busting agent, the TPA, within a narrow time frame to uh, eligible uh, patients that are suffering from stroke. As a result of this treatment, we adjusted our uh, stroke protocol. This is the New York City REMAC stroke protocol, 412. And you all know this uh, protocol. It involves using the Cincinnati Pre-Hospital Stroke Scale in order to try to identify patients that are suffering from stroke and bringing eligible patients to the appropriate primary stroke centers for potential treatment. So the role of EMS is really early identification, including documentation of the last known well, an expedited evaluation, including uh, checking the finger sick blood glucose and assessing the uh, Cincinnati Pre-Hospital Stroke Scale, obtaining witness information, and then rapid transportation to a primary stroke center uh, with hospital notification. And the goal really is to be on scene less than 15 minutes. When we start to think about the next era of stroke treatment, we have to go back to the pathophysiology of stroke. So again, to reiterate what we we're trying to do when we treat stroke is we're reopening uh, occluded blood vessels uh, that, and that improves clinical outcome in acute ischemic stroke through reperfusion and salvage of threatened tissues. That is, brain that isn't dead is getting the blood flow and the nutrients that it needs to survive. And what we see is that IV thrombolytics 
or TPA as we've discussed, have limited efficacy or they don't really work for large vessel occlusions. And so we have to consider other ways to treat this stroke. So we're calling it an endovascular revolution and what we're uh, really talking about is something called mechanical thrombectomy or physically removing the clot from the blood vessel um, to open up that blood vessel and allow that brain tissue to get the, the blood supply and the nutrients it needs. Uh, so if you see here in this slide, uh, there, this is a device that removes the blood clot and opens the blood vessel back. And that really goes in through the groin, the way we, that we treat heart attacks. It goes up into the brain and it physically removes that blood clot so that the, the brain can get the, the blood flow that it needs. And on, along the bottom of the, of the page, you see that uh, there are two before pictures which suggest that there's an occlusion or blockage of that blood vessel. Uh, and then after the intervention is done, after the, there's a mechanical thrombectomy, you see that there's a very rich blood supply to the areas of the brain that, were, that had blockage in, in, the, in the first uh, pictures that we see. The evidence for this comes from 2015 where uh, there was five and then six trials, and today there's even more, uh, that really uh, look at how uh, this endovascular or thr mechanical thrombectomy therapy is better than the best uh, tr medical treatment or better than IV uh, thrombolytics or TPA. Uh, so what we're really seeing is a, real, a change and a shift in the way uh, that we're treating stroke. Really that necessitates uh, a change in the way that we transport stroke. So we can't bring uh, a, a, a patient with a large vessel occlusion uh, to uh, a place that can only give TPA, we have to think about how we're going to get that patient to the place where they can receive the best care for their disease. And so moving forward, we're looking at two stroke center designations. One is the primary stroke center, which can give TPA only and really uh, provide great care for the support of minor strokes and, and small vessel occlusions. Then what we need to think about from an EMS standpoint is looking at the thrombectomy stroke centers. And at thrombectomy stroke centers, uh, they, they'll have the ability, the specialized equipment, the specialists who can do this procedure, uh, where they can, give the thromp they can do a thrombectomy and give TPA for the treatment of large vessel occlusions. So really the goal is to bring the right patient to the right hospital at the right time for the right treatment. The problem is that as opposed to or contrary to heart attacks, there is no 12 lead uh, EKG equivalent to identify strokes. Um, that led to the creation of uh, numerous pre-hospital stroke scales. Um, and here's a list of a uh, number of them, the Los Angeles Motor Scale, um, the Race Scale, and there are many, many others. And what that really means is that there is no one best stroke scale that we can use in order to identify stroke patients. After two years of discussions with uh, regional leader, leaders, uh, what we have chosen for New York City is essentially um, a modified version of the Los Angeles Motor Stroke Scale, um, which is a shift from a stroke scre screening tool to a stroke severity identification tool. And what we felt that this, um, this scale has a good balance between overcalling and undercalling uh, stroke patients. And uh, just remember this number over here, number four, we're gonna talk about this uh, in uh, great detail later. Essentially, it is our well-known Cincinnati pre-hospital stroke scale with one more component, uh, the hand grip, and that leads to our stroke scale, the New York City SLAMS uh, scale. Or another way to look at it is the Los Angeles Motor uh, Stroke Scale with an added component of speech. In addition to that, as opposed to the uh, Cincinnati Pre-Hospital Stroke Scale where it was either yes or no, now we are actually assigning numerical values to our assessment, to our patient assessment. And we add up those uh, numbers in order to reach to the total score of the uh, new stroke scale. How does this all come together? This nice algorithm describes the new New York City Stroke Triage Protocol. It starts from assessing the patient, checking the finger stick blood glucose, doing the actual New York City SLAMS uh, scale, adding up the values of uh, each element, 
and then based on the result, determining whether the patient will go to a thrombectomy stroke center or to a primary stroke center. In the next segment, we'll be discussing the details of the stroke protocol and how it will be implemented. However, I wanted to take a few minutes right now to talk about how we'll know we're, we'll be doing a good job in our change in the stroke protocols in the region. For one, from an EMS perspective, we're going to be looking at how often the SLAM scale will have been done, both the individual elements and the total score, and whether it's documented in the PCRs. We're going to be looking at whether or not the last known well time is documented and noted in the care of the treatment. We'll also be looking at the finger stick blood glucose and repeat if, it's, if you're treating for hypoglycemia. But essentially, we want to know that all of the aspects of the scale, of the scale and the protocol are being performed uh, in order to uh, stay true to uh, caring for these stroke patients. In that vein, we're also going to be looking at the on-scene times. We're going to be looking at whether or not online medical control was contacted appropriately. And ultimately, we want to get to the point where we're looking at, did we take the right patients to the right hospitals uh, and to receive the care that they'll need uh, to treat their stroke? As a note for all the providers in the region, we want to make sure that you're aware that we're not going live with this protocol until uh, the region is ready. Uh, until notified, uh, we want to make sure that you're following the current stroke protocols that are in effect uh, until uh, your medical director or your operational leadership lets you know that it's time to move forward with these new stroke protocols. At the end of the day, it's a new era for stroke care in New York City. What we're really doing is affording our sickest patients state-of-the-art treatment in order to give them the best chance for an optimal outcome. You, as EMS providers, are the first link in the stroke system of care chain. Early recognition, rapid evaluation and expedited transport to the appropriate stroke center are keys to success. Without your knowledge and participation in the system, we won't have effective stroke care for our patients. Thank you again for your attention to uh, our slides today, and uh, we look forward to working with you in the future.